Okay, welcome to the proposed final budget. Um, things have progressed quite quickly since the close of March. We finalized our staffing, we received our health insurance numbers, and we refined our revenues and expenditures. Uh, next slide, Mr. Stengel. Uh, so this is a historical slide, and as the board knows, these are the three strategies to balance our budgets. Uh, some districts use one or two of these strategies. Historically, we have used a mix of all three to balance our budgets. Uh, the board's goal since I've got here has been to reduce the reliance on fund balance to balance the budget by returning to a structural balance. Um, as you'll see as we continue through this presentation, this proposed final budget does just that. Next slide, please. So we've had some significant changes from the last draft of the budget. Uh, these categories were updated accordingly based on a five-year look back and projections from the close of March. Um, the biggest uh, savings was in our health care. We had that it originally projected at 18 percent, um, which would have been about a $1.8 million increase. It has now reduced to 14 percent, a savings of about $400,000. Uh, we've taken steps um, in these certain categories. We've reduced some overtime. We've refined our transportation number uh, based on the number of runs we have. Uh, we reduced our tuition reimbursement based on a five-year look back. Again, the health care was big. And then with staffing being, being finalized at the end of March, we were able to more accurately project our salaries. On the revenue front, this budget does include a uh, tax increase of 1.2667 mills. Um, it shows increases uh, based on my discussion in the Treasurer's report and earned income tax, increases in realty transfer, uh, in delinquent tax, um, and we've updated a basic ed subsidy, transportation subsidy, our health, health subsidy, and our PEASERS and Social Security subsidies that all have something to do with our salary and benefit figures. So, Rob, let me just um, help clarify for the board. The governor, you updated the revenues based upon the governor's recommendation. Is that correct? But so, you didn't take the whole amount. That is correct, Dr. Steinhauer. We took, um, in some categories, about half. In some categories, uh, like special ed, we took about two-thirds, but still not what the governor has proposed. But we're hearing good news from Harrisburg, so I'm confident that those will come to fruition. So those would even be increased just a little bit by the time we get to May, yeah, should, potentially have an impact on millage. Certainly. So should, should we get some clear indication um, by May 22nd that those are going to be increased, we will adapt accordingly. Mr. Galecko, you, uh, I'm sorry, you moved um, uh, efficiently through uh, a few of the bullet points. Sure. On, on the health care, um, you indicated that previously we were um, projecting an 18% increase, uh, that we are now uh, looking at a 14% increase. Correct. Um, and, and what were the, the, the dollar equivalents? Of 400,000. Uh, but for 18 and 14 percent ish. Oh, 400,000 between. Oh, so the initial dollar amount was 1.8 million. Our health care cost is just around 10 million a year currently. And so an 18 percent increase would have been 1.8 million. Okay. 14 percent increase 1. would be 1.4, correct. Gotcha. Um, the refined transportation. Could you speak to that a little bit? Certainly. So um, we, we have a number, um, obviously, like most things in the budget, we start with the worst case scenario and then we work through the runs that we know we're going to have, uh, the majority of the special ed runs for next school year. So we've just went through that list and refined those numbers uh, to get to that piece. Okay. And the um, the provider for the, the, the transportation, is that that contract is? That we are in the second of three years with that contract. So that will be next spring, we'll, re we'll request proposals um, for that transportation contract. The reduction in overtime, um, is, is some, did something systemic change or just tighten the belt a little bit? We tighten the belt a little bit. We did a look back. Um, we currently have a, a floater custodian now that has reduced some of our overtime needs. So that was that was the, the basic adjustment there. Um, your projections, you talked about the governor's um, you know, recommended budget, and, and certainly that hasn't been finalized yet. Um, in the legislature, um, but you were making some some estimates based on what you you think will actually be returned based on what what was included in his initial draft. Um, fair to say that those are conservative estimates, for sure, Mr. Wild. And, and I mean, you, you you expressed a degree of confidence that the numbers that you used were 
um, you know, uh, probably uh, under projecting, you know, what we were actually uh, could anticipate to receive. I mean, ba based on what, though, I guess is what I'm getting at. Uh, just based on history, based off the makeup of the legislature, based on what we're hearing from PASBO and PASA and how the budget negotiations are going. Um, and just his, he had a significant ask, as did Governor Wolf the year before, and uh, the, the spirit of negotiation meeting in the middle there seems to tend to be a compromise in the legislature. So okay. that is the makeup of those numbers. Okay. And, and lastly, the, um, the increase in real estate tax, this uh, 1.2667 mills, that's, that's the index? That is a 4.8% increase, which is the Act 1 index, correct? Could you, could you speak a little bit about the Act 1 index? what it is just for folks that maybe haven't tuned in to prior board meetings where we've discussed this and and, sure. and how that's calculated and what variables go into that sure it's a it's a calculation of cpi of uh, the statewide weekly wage average for the state and a national average of education um, raises or education inflation um, so it's based it's usually about a year and a half to two years behind based on kind of a booming economy in 21, 22. That has what has afforded our index of 4.8%. Additionally to that, um, the demographics in Mount Lebanon are changing and our aid ratio has begun, begun to increase. We have more children in need and that has also inflated our index. So the, the history, as I understand, of, of Act One is, is that it was passed um, and one of the intentions of the law was to sort of level the playing field year over year so that, that school districts couldn't hypothetically forego tax increases for decades at a time and then, you know, crush the, the community with a massive increase down the road. It requires districts to um, be more incremental. Um, in, in their approach, is that, that accurate? Well said, Mr. Weiland. So that, that is the story behind Act 1 since 2006. Uh, we were afforded this index anywhere from 1% to 5%. It's been over that, that time frame. But that is the idea of it, that you wouldn't get a 5 mil, 7 mil, 10 mil tax increase, that you would incrementally phase these increases in over time, not to burden the community. And that index is set for us based on those economic conditions and indicators that you outlined for us a moment that, ago. That is correct. Um, okay, I, I'm sorry, I don't have any other questions on, on this stuff. Anybody else on the board? Anybody? I do have a couple sure. of questions. Um, in, our, in our packet, we received the budget revenue analysis form like this, which pro projects the next four years and has historically two of the past years. And in your yellow column um, is the use of fund balance. Correct. Um, in 2021 and 22, $1,028,211. Sorry, $1, and the 22, 23, $850,000 borrowed you, is the uh, emphasis yes. in order to balance the budget projected but then we didn't spend all that was budgeted and so that money was available to be paid back to the fund balance so money was returned to the fund balance for sure in 22 23 was it also was that 1 million number so uh 21 22 uh the uh, figure used to balance the budget was one million five hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. We only used one million, so we essentially returned a half a million to fund balance there. And then the budget is what you're seeing in 22-23. The current budget calls for the use of eight hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars in fund balance. Our current projections, uh, based on this month, have us paying that uh, eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars back as well. Okay, so when we borrow from that fund balance and then we underspend our budget, we are able to pay that back. So that money hasn't gone away. That money has been returned back into the district's fund balance. And you're projecting um, borrowing zero this from the fund balance, but raising our taxes. So when I see 0.8 and money was borrowed, 0.8 raised and money was borrowed, 1.2, but no money is borrowed, and then I look at the projection for the next three years, and I see we're back to, we have other information on there, and it's all just an estimate. 
I'm wondering, since that money is able to be paid back, we're borrowing from ourselves in order to fund our programs. And by borrowing zero from our fund balance, but raising our taxes, taxes never go back down. So we're now taxing the entire community at 1.2, um, but not borrowing from fund balance. Now I understand there's been concern about borrowing from fund balance. I get that. But if it's able to be paid back, then I get less worried about it because we're able to pay it back. But I know that we're underspending because we have unfilled positions and we have salaries that didn't go out because of unfilled positions and that kind of thing. I understand that. But we never dialed back the taxes. So a 1.2 raise maybe wouldn't need to be so high if we borrowed from fund balance and then paid it back. And then it doesn't go across the board forever for everybody. Certainly, if that would be the board's directive as a strategy to balance the budget, we could make a model that way. In my professional opinion, we have um, used the appropriate amount of fund balance over the years. It's time to flip the switch and start returning monies to fund balance, which you see that projection does in year uh, three, four, and five. Mm -hmm. um, based on our, in, our inflationary environment um, and some unknowns with the teacher's contract and et cetera, um, that would be the most conservative way to budget. And also, with the board's policy being 6% of the subsequent year's budget to hold in fund balance, that 6% continually increases as we do that. So we need that 6% um, increases, which reduces the other categories that we could use to either balance the budget or send money to capital reserve. So uh, we've, um, it's my, my opinion, professional opinion, have gone deep enough, and now it's time to return to structural balance. Capital projects. Yeah. And, and th that was actually going to be yeah. My, yeah. my statement is we've used the, um, Over the coverage to, you know, the, um, or money that we've gotten from um, bond refinance, where we've gotten very lucky on those days to fund our capital projects, except for building the high school, which we had to put out bonds for. But things like, you know, when we had to Returf a field because of the age of the turf, or creating the upper practice field, um, which is used constantly, or you know putting air conditioning in uh, the other nine buildings that didn't have it, which makes the learning environment that much better for all of our students and staff. Um, we didn't tax for those projects. We used money that we got from bond refi or money that we had in the the general fund. So, look, I, I'm not loving the, the 1.2. I, I don't think anybody is. Um, but I, I do think we need to start looking to the future and to what our next down the line project is and make sure that when we need to replace, you know, more playground equipment or, you know, we need to do something with any of our fields that boards in the future have the ability to do that. I echo those sentiments. I mean, there's going to be a lot of pipeline projects in the future, and the schools, the seven elementary schools, aren't getting any younger. So, so to, to speak to that a little schools. bit, our, our, um, our bonds go out to 2035, so we have about 12 years left. So now is the time to kind of uh, flip the switch and work for the next 12 years to create that room in the budget to eventually work on those future projects, work on recreation projects, and, and have those kind of monies in reserve. And um, the teacher's contract being the biggest kind of unknown, this um, you know calls for a scenario that is consistent with their raises in the past. Mr. Glucker, would it be accurate to say, <clears throat> excuse me, that your three to five year forecast you flipped the switch on the fund balance, so now we're adding to the fund balance, unlike previous years where we've drawn it down. Sure. And is it also accurate to say that, irrespective of the Act 1 index, your future year millage rates are more in line with historical averages at Mount Lebanon, around that 0 0.5, 0 0.8 increase, and this year is a little bit of an anomal anomaly, and the future year is a little bit more in line with um, certainly, certainly. Yeah. Well said, uh, Mr. Elwine. That, that is the ultimate goal here, is to get back to a manageable tax increase without digging into fund balance. 
to continue to fund our programs. Mm -hmm. um, we'll get later on in the slides here, but we've added some significant value and addressed some areas of need in the budget that I think the community will be pleased with. And I think that is another great justification for this, this increase. Rob, do you want to go to the slide that has the use of fund balance, this one sure. right here? Uh, Chris, can you go forward a couple slides? <coughs> The one with the charts. Next, next one, next one. Yep. There, next one. That one. Okay, so this was the projection in May of 2020 uh, when we did the zero mil budget. So you can see in 2021, we actually used two point almost $8 million to balance the budget without a tax increase to the community. And then we were projecting along the green lines, that's how that would phase in um, over the next uh, three to five years. Uh, 2122 kind of shook out as, as we anticipated. Last year, we took about $150,000 less. And this year, with a more significant tax increase than usual, again, based on a lot of inflationary factors, um, we were able to return to structural balance in 23 24 without the use of fund balance. So that, that was a board, uh, that was a, a, a goal that was um, talked about by the board uh, many times with us making sure that we had less reliance on use of fund balance. But that's still one of your tools in your arsenal. So you still have those three options, raise taxes, reduce programs, um, use some fund balance, or use a little bit of a combination of three. So th those are still on the board. Those are still on the board's um, plate of possibilities. Sure. Let, let's, let's work back, um, and, and I think I'll address some of the additional questions. I could feel kind of where this is headed. So, Chris, if you could slide go back. four, slide four, yes, please. Okay, so we, we've uh, uh, breast this uh, conversation uh, with a millage increase of one point two six six seven, with no use of fund balance. Again, this budget is in line with the district's strategic planning goals, maintains our programmatic integrity, and adds value and addresses area of needs. Again, we, we budget like within 1% of our budget. We're trending about a million dollars, um, close to our $108 million budget this year. So uh, margins are too thin for my liking, but, we, but the board charges us with making uh, a conservative, accurate budget, and I believe that's what we have here. Uh, next slide, Mr. Stangle. So I think the board can... Uh, hang their hat on, on this slide and you know, the board charged the administration with not only building a structurally balanced budget, but adding value to our already robust programming while addressing the areas of need in a post-pandemic environment. Uh, the list above identifies the programs and services that were introduced in the 23-24 budget. So in the 23-24 school year, uh, we will have girls wrestling, boys volleyball, uh, a line item for educational softwares and eBooks, which has been uh, the trend with our, our flip to one to one. All of our union groups in, in groups make at least $15 an hour now. There are monies in there for DEI initiatives. We have moved um, a significant amount of operating expenses that were formerly paid from capital projects back to the general fund. And this budget also includes $175,000 for some much needed recreation projects. Uh, the areas of need, which were brought, uh, um, you know, by students of need, both uh, physically and mentally, uh, we added a school nurse, three additional special education teachers, three additional elementary teachers um, based on enrollment, uh, six new support staff. Uh, we have two teachers on special assignment, one working on our um, uh, implementation of Schoology, another with our ELA series. Um, and again, special education services, both the amount and the cost have increased significantly. Um, the English as a second language services have increased significantly by over 300,000 this year. Uh, we were steady at about 120 to 125 kids. That has ballooned to over 150 students this year. And then again, transportation. When I got here, transportation was about $800,000 a year. We're projecting it at about 1.6 next year. So that's, also, that's the cost increasing uh, slightly, but also the number of runs increasing, and then the area of need based on the, the uh, temperature in this country is the inclusion of our SRO here at the high school. Um, I do have a, a question on this slide. You know, th these are the, the where you have the school nurse on down on, on the right side of the slide. Those are all that were added this current year that are built into the budget to continue for next year. Um, uh, no, but, not not 
completely like e ESL right, services. Right, ESL increased and the transportation um, is increasing. And, and right now our teachers on special assignments, we have one and a half and we're next year we build in two full time. Okay. Okay. Um, with, um, I, I'm sorry for interrupting. Oh yeah, no, no, that, okay. that is cl clarifying, that helps. Um, with the retirements we had, does this budget include replacing all of our retirements? It does. There were 15 teacher retirements. Uh, their cost was a little over $2.6 million. Those have all been replaced in this budget. And we continue to have more uh, resignations and retirements, as uh, you'll see a couple on tonight's personnel report. So that will help our budget also. Certainly. And the anticipation is, is that those will also be replaced, but typically at a, at a lower step, you know, yes. when you bring in a new teacher as opposed to somebody who's been here for yeah. 20 our, years. Our average hire, Mr. <laughs> Weiland, is a teacher with four years of experience and a master's degree, which is paid significantly less than the top step. Sure. Yes. All right, next slide, Mr. Stengel. So our 30,000 foot view, uh, again with the millage increase to 1.2667. This budget is structurally imbalanced at $115,155,000 with uh, no use of fund balance and completely in balance. Um, again, this is a 4.8% increase in real estate tax. Um, it meets the board's goal of structural balance and sets our district up for continued positive financial outcomes in the years to come. And Mr. Galecko, just relative to our discussion a moment ago on fund balance, that as the total size of our annual budget increases, our targeted six to eight percent of, uh, of fund balance, that number also goes up as a proportion of, of the larger. That is fund correct. Amount. So at, at this amount, you would need at least six point nine million in unreserved fund balance to meet the board's policy. So it's not a matter of just keeping that money stashed in a mattress somewhere. The amount of money that you have to have set aside uh, also increases as our total budget goes right. up. Right. Well. That, that is why that uh, policy is very popular when we talk to Moody's. Thank you. And can I just um, also check my math here? But we're looking at like a 7 or 8 percent increase in our annual budget next year yeah it's about 7.7.1 percent looking That's, we're recommending a 4.8 percent tax increase tax. You, that is correct so um we were at a little under 109 million on the expenditure side so it is about seven percent on the expenditure side and, and very similarly on the <laughs> revenue side you know things are costing more um everybody sees it at, at the gas pump or at the grocery store and, and we are not immune to any of that currently Thank you, Ms. Fletcher. That's a good observation. So our budget has increased more than the, the tax recommended increase. Certainly. So just to speak on that alone, so 1.2667 mil tax increase is just a little over $3 million. Just an increase of salaries and benefits this year is about $3.4 million. Mm -hmm. So our tax increase is, is basically covering the cost of our personnel. That's my continued discussion is, is unfortunately, um, the, the way to balance budgets in a school with, without tax increases is to reduce staffing. However, we don't see a decline in enrollment where that's appropriate. Sure. Hence our, uh, our figures here. On, on that last point, just, I'm sorry, Mr. Elwine, just as a matter of clarification, so under the school code, we're, we're limited. We can't just start. Yeah, we have two reasons why you can, uh, uh, reduce staff. One is a significant decline in enrollment, and the other one is dropping a program. So, say we, and we're not considering doing this, but say we dropped French, yeah. um, then you could furlough those teachers. I don't want anybody to think we're getting rid of French, but that's the way. And if we saw a significant decrease in enrollment from 5,000 to say 3,000, then you can demonstrate to the Department of Ed they have to approve all those furloughs. Uh, in those two categories. Am I correct, Mr. Holtz? Thank you. And our, our enrollment, as far as I've seen, has been steady for decades. It's going to be steady for decades. And I guess this is stating the obvious, but just because we have received um, communications at the board level, particularly from parents of elementary students about class sizes and increasing the amount of teachers, this current budget does not increase the amount of teachers beyond what we've had in the buildings this year. I know there's additional teachers that we brought on this year. 
Um, so one of the contingency um, strategies we use, um, when, when the board approves the budget in May, there are always some staffing changes that occurred. Maybe somebody retires, somebody resigns, somebody goes someplace else. So that leaves some additional money in the budget. So like fortunately for this year, we were able to add these without busting our budget. So typically um, over the summer months, if we see the need for additional uh, teachers in uh, fourth grade at, at Hoover, uh, or wherever, um, we make that decision to, to add additional staff there. We have the potential to cover those positions without busting our budget. So again, you take a, when you pass the budget, it's a snapshot in time on that exact day. But then there's 50 other variables that happen. <laughs> cost of gas could go down, cost of um, services could go down. Um, a lot of things can happen over that time, and they can also increase too without us knowing. So, you know, Rob says we're about 1% within 1% of our budget, which is a million dollars for us. So that, that gives us a little bit of leeway in there. So we will be monitoring staff class size very carefully. Um, we do have some projections for right now of what we think we need, but we will continue to monitor them between now and August. 23rd when students start again and if we feel like we need to add classes or sections like we did last year I'll come to the or somebody will come to the board and offer that to you. <laughs> um, I, Dr. Davis will come to the yeah, board and offer. I have a no, question I, I along those lines. Yeah I, do, I was gonna say I, I have a, a clarification based on what Ms. Leischer just said um, and correct me if I'm wrong Dr. Irvin but um, Teachers are assigned to buildings, but they're not locked into those buildings, correct? So if, say, say Hoover all of a sudden had an influx of, you know, 15 fourth graders, since we're, do, we're talking about Hoover fourth grade, and there was a decrease in second graders at Foster where they didn't need a third teacher, that teacher could be moved over to alleviate the overcrowding at Hoover. Yes, that's correct. Okay, just wanted to make sure that that, I have, that the teachers can be moved around amongst buildings to deal with what's it, in well. the current teacher contract. We're required to give them uh, indication at the end of the school year of their uh, tentative assignment, but we certainly have the capacity to to change those as staffing needs uh, move around. Mrs. Burdick. Okay. Yeah, I am lost in a sea of papers here, but I I read that we're. We're 62 students or so fewer next year, and so that's not a very material change, but we're up 15 elementary school students, and then we're down secondary students. And so if we're looking at being having a larger enrollment in elementary and a smaller enrollment in secondary, it seems that we might need another teacher in elementary. Well, it, it depends on where those kids are. Right. There could be one kid in every section, so that potentially but couldn't. To Mrs. Ulbrich's point, so the teachers might move around, but yeah. the class size would be adjusted. And what is the what is the target class size in uh, Mount Lebanon Elementary School? Uh, the board does not have a policy on, on targeted class size. Our goal, Dr. Irvin? Our goal is to have a learning environment where we're certain that we could, that the teachers are able to meet the needs of all the students. So um, a little bit open-ended, um, but um, I've been in districts where there was a specific number 30. When you got to 30, you added a teacher. Um, we, we, are, we do not have any class sizes of 30. Uh, our, our largest class size is 26 at our elementary schools yes. and, and if you want to and we have 17s yeah. also yeah. remember like uh, uh, in order to staff all of our buildings we have seven elementary schools it would be nice if we had one big elementary school and then we could divide the kids up perfectly but just based upon our value of having neighborhood elementary schools causes some variability so we have a second grade class that has 16 students in it in one building, and it might have 23 kids at, a, at another building. So there is always gonna be that variability with seven elementary schools. 
Going back to the budget, have you seen, Mr. Glecko, is this pretty consistent with some of our peer school districts? With um, we're lucky to be one of the first ones out of the gate. Everybody's very happy when they, we they come look out to you. early. They look to us, but um, we are seeing very similar trends. Uh, our neighbors in St. Clair, who I speak to frequently, are seeing the same thing. So. Great. It's really good. Mr. Owen, I'm sorry. I cut you off a bit. No, that's fine. I um, Focusing on beyond this year, right, your long-range planning, and I just want to make sure I'm just highlighting, as Ms. Fleischer said, costs are going up, expenditures going up, but you're looking future years, your future year forecast is back down to millage rates increases of like around the 0.8 range. Is that correct? Over like yeah. the next three, five years? That, that is correct, I, Mr. Elwin. Okay. So just, I think that's important. Yeah. Yeah, I think, again, again, these projections are a snapshot in time, you know, based on a lot of variables. but. Um, I used a projection of a 3% tax increase, being that that's what normal inflation was for the next four years, and that keeps us in structural balance without using fund balance, should there not be a global pandemic or and even rate like, falls. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sorry, didn't write, not even like not using fund balance, but you're, you're looking at probably adding fund balance in future So years, if, right? if these trends would keep up and the board uh, would continue to raise taxes by 3%, year over year, we could project adding to fund balance in year four and five pretty significantly. Okay. For what unknowns will come our way. New playgrounds for everyone. Okay, there you go. <laughs> go to the next slide. Uh, next slide, slide seven, please. Uh, this was a new slide for, this, for tonight. So this slide kind of delineates what a tax index tax increase means for an average taxpayer in the community. It is an added cost, however, the board has added a significant amount of value and address some important issues in this budget. So you'll see um, at 200000 about $21 a month. That's an assessed value. That's that assessed. is not the sale price of your house. Like, we need to be careful that. Well, well said, Dr. Steiner. So that is your assessed value of your house. Um, the average, actually, residential property is assessed at $213,000. And the average sale price of a home in Mount Lebanon in 2022 was $337,000. So I think this addresses the um, the majority of taxpayers in Mount Lebanon. Okay. Uh, we can go to slide number eight, please, Mr. Stengel. We, we've talked about these. Yeah, we talked a little bit about this, but again, it's it's been the board's uh, goal since May of 2020 to, re to um, kind of return to structurally balanced. You can see the history of budgeted fund balance here and then 23, 24 um, being zero and just you know, I have to commend the board for kind of being patient and incrementally raising taxes the last few years. To get us to this point, you know, when we had these initial conversations in March and April of 20, you know, they said, what does it look like? I'm saying it's three to five years to recovery. We're right in line with our plan that we made uh, then thanks to the support of our school board. And Mr. Greco, what is the current forecast for 2000 for this year? So, uh, so this year, it, the budget calls for 850. Uh, I have us paying that back and maybe adding about 200000 So, again, we're around that million-dollar um, slim margin there um, where, where we're projecting the year to end up. But, again, that changes every month. But things are projecting as normal currently. Thanks. Uh, next slide, Mr. Stengel. Uh, we had some robust discussion on the uh, use of fund balance. Um, so we'll go to slide 10. Uh, so again, we will. We're hearing positive news from Harrisburg about the budget. Um, the the state has about five billion dollars in reserves. Um, there are staffing changes on the personnel report, and then will continue to come that will affect the budget. And we will continue to refine our revenues after the close of April. In the first of May, we receive our homestead disc, and that's our assessed value finalized um, by the county. We receive that in May, so we'll, we'll hope that that um, ticks up enough that they could help. Um, our budget out, and we'll work diligently here over our 4,000 expenditure accounts to try to reduce expenditures where possible. And, um, you know, this is a process myself and my staff just continue to look for places that are, you know, um, that need to change or out of whack or trending differently so we can um, capture everything accurately. Mr. Galeca, the, the homestead disc, could you explain that? Sure. So each year the um, uh, county certifies um, our assessed values, but in those assessed values are people that get the homestead exemptions. So if you own your home and that's your homestead and you applied for the homestead exemption from the county, you get a reduction on your tax bill um, based on the millage rate and the value of your property. So your tax bill goes down 
here it's around 20 to 40 dollars per year um, we then receive that money from the state that is gaming revenue that is also part of act one so this year is about two million dollars spread out between the 8,000 homesteads in the community so you see a reduction on your tax bill if you have a homestead and then that's also the county certifying the values for this next school tax year. Is, is there typically a, a big change or swing with that? so we see anywhere from a half a percent to a one percent increase year over year so um uh i expect it to go up it went up slightly last year so i expect that same trend to continue we, we are uh according to the patch the hottest real estate market in pittsburgh um yeah mount lebanon squirrel hill shady side we're still number one so wonderful uh, just a uh, question clarification we talk about it regularly the 80 percent of our budget is our staffing and uh, needs staffing and benefits correct correct so and all of our staffing um, salaries are based on contracts that we have with those employees that's correct so we can't adjust those salaries the, except during a contract negotiation um is the, so once you know they are guaranteed those salaries that, that's correct those folks as long as they're employed here will continue to, to move through the steps in their contracts we do have some non-representative groups it's we have a small. yeah a head custodians um specialists administrative assistants and administrative assistants they're they're non-represented so the board we typically build about a two and a half to three percent increase right. in for them. which is consistent across some of the other contracts all yeah. the other contracts so 80 percent of our budget even though we don't know what's going on with the teacher contract because we're still in negotiation 80 percent of our budget is already set before you even hit go that plus then there's the debt payment so you're really dealing with a very very small amount of money that you have any sort of wiggle room with yeah it, well said miss albrecht so yeah you know, 10 percent of our budget is our bond payments 80 percent is our salaries and benefits uh you turn the lights on and add toilet paper you're up at about another million and a half so um it, all all our contracts you know needs of our students uh, we're very confined on how we can spend our money and it, again they're controlled our revenues con controlled by the state and the local environment and our expenditures are controlled by contract and, and mandated costs and compliance efforts from the local to the federal level Thank you. can and i have a question on this slide so again this month the board has to vote on whether to approve this proposed budget um which doesn't mean we're approving the budget right you're so, posting it for right we have review. to post it for 30 days um and then approve it in may so uh, all of this activity that's going to happen then in that 30-day window to refine staffing revenue expenditure state subsidies do you think that there is the potential for that to we we have a balanced budget right now so do you think there's a potential for that to move the needle yes on the but would it would it basically just i mean <laughs> i i i know where you're at miss fleischer I, I wouldn't be uh millions of dollars it wouldn't be a material effect yeah. it could certainly oh, reduce the tax burden on the community but or um it, you know impact our, our revenues positively or vice versa okay but it's um i'm hopeful and i've seen with the homestead um credit and all those things come through that this has moved the needle uh enough i think last year we moved about two hundred and twenty thousand. so I, I could foresee something that in that range so go to the last slide, Mr. Stengel. So as Ms. Fleischer said, on April 17th, we'll ask the board to approve uh, the preliminary um, motion, knowing that the community will have the opportunity to provide comment on the budget. So it'll be posted on the website um, uh, with all my projections on the state form um, for public review. And the, again, we'll continue to explore any kind of cost cutting measures or revenue enhancements. And the uh, budget is set for final approval on May 22nd. Um, that is usually a month earlier than most folks, but that allows us to um, collect an, a, another month of interest income on those tax dollars. We piggyback with the municipality on mailing out our tax bills, where we save some money uh, clerically and uh, on the cost of mailing there. Um, so 
this is where we're at. It's again a snapshot in time. We'll, we'll continue to work through this process. Um, visit our budget webpage, uh, my forum, which is about an hour is out there. All the former presentations and then the accompanying uh, statements that go with them will be there. And as always, I'm available for um, to talk about the budget on person, in email, or um, however you'd like to reach out. Thank you, Mr. Becker. Thank you.